It sure is dark here. Yep. Depending on where you are in the cage, sometimes it's night and sometimes it rains. So, I think I've told you most of what you need to know so far. You understand what you need to do in this world, right? In a general sense, yes. I need to find Luna fragments, which I can get by restoring the past. They're a sort of reward for my actions. And you're going to guide me through this series of stone buildings you call the cage. I feel like I'm in a video game. Oh, that's a little too mad at you. Make me sweat. Did you say something? This is a dark scarecrow, huh? What should I do to fix the past inside it? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I forgot. I think you have to... Um... What the... In this country, science has advanced to the point where artificial intelligence rules over the populace. As a war raged, one girl sang to bring energy and joy back to the people. Some disagreed with her actions, thinking them inappropriate for wartime. However, she held firm her beliefs and resolved to continue singing. But then, on that very same day, she meets another girl. Dust and gunpowder swirl among the city ruins. The smell of fried circuitry hangs heavy in the air. This place was once home to humans. Now it is home to soldiers who await their opportunity to strike. Standing beside them is a lone girl who looks very much out of place. On her signal, the soldiers load their weapons with armor-piercing bullets. As she issues a second signal, a flash envelops the entire area. This is followed by a hailstorm of bullets. Flames erupt from nozzles, tearing apart what remains of the ruins. The girl boldly steps into the crossfire. But she is unharmed. She is not flesh and blood, but a hologram. Confirming the enemy soldiers' positions, she discloses their locations to her allies. The strategy works with stunning efficiency. to beg for your life.
The day is won thanks to the decisiveness of the AI that oversees the country. And with the battle over, the simulated head of state proposes a new tactic. Place mines under enemy corpses. It is a ruthless plan. One that seeks to blunt the effectiveness of any reinforcements. But the people accept her brutality, for they know she will sacrifice anything in pursuit of perfection. And that she does so for their sakes. So if those were memories of the past, it means I have to experience the life of that woman in black. Oh, you're so smart, you. <laughs> Maybe a little too smart. <laughs> this place is seriously run down. I hope the path doesn't collapse. And now I've got to deal with the Black Barrier, do I? Prepare to beg for your life. Open fire. Prepare to beg for your life. Just as calculated.
<sighs> now, that was a great nap. Huh? What was that? Oh, wait! Hold on! What the...? Sleeping in your apron's the best feeling in the world, Mumsy. You... have a baby? The name's Babe, pal. And don't you forget it. Call me Sweetie or Cuddlebug or some crap like that, and I'll break your legs, kiddo. Fair warning. Please, Yuzuki! Don't tell anyone I brought my child to work. It's just one thing after another in this place. It's pitch black in here. Not even any moonlight coming in. Figures. Can't use the light on my phone either. <gasps> I've got this one! Go for it, Mumsy! And... ta -da! I'll light the way for ya! Brilliant, aren't I? So... Brilliant, I can hardly look at you. By what laws of physics does that work? I'll lead the way, so follow me! This place gives me the creeps. I think we can go ahead from here. Having completed their objective, the AI returns to the city with her soldiers. Just then, several reports come in. The AI has her hands full with the business of governance.
Her gaze grows as cold as the air around her. The man attempts to apologize for his indiscretion, but it is too late. She hates nothing more than the word incomplete, and does not attempt to hide her disdain. Prepare to beg for your life. side with you. If you ever say that word to me again, it will be the last one you utter. You cannot run from me. You cannot hide. I will destroy you with a thought. Now stop wasting my time. Terrified by the rage in her eyes, the man crumples to the ground. With a dismissive click of the tongue, she sets off again. In her task to govern the nation, the girl seeks perfection and loathes incompleteness. Perhaps because it reminds her of herself. For she understands a key element was left out during her creation. And she will do anything to obtain it. She will do anything to be complete. An A.I. ruling a country? Are you sure this past of yours isn't just fiction? It's a real past, all right. It definitely existed somewhere. to beg for your life. Not waste my time.
Looks like this is the way outside. Guess I don't need my light anymore, huh? You're still the light of my life, Mumsy. Prepare to beg for your life. Providing support. Oh, wow. Jellyfish in the sky? Oh, goodness. I hope they don't eat us. They don't seem dangerous. Still... <sighs> I really am in some kind of other world. A beautiful view. Yeah, it feels like I'm walking in the ocean. <sighs> Reminds me of when my family went to the aquarium. My sister was so excited when she saw all the jellyfish light up. What a lovely memory. Let's make some of our own in the cage, shall we? Voices play in the girl's mind. They are conversations held by researchers before she woke. Conversations burned in her memory. Every time she recalls their words, an inky blackness fills her heart. They lament the failure of Unit 1, her predecessor. And having determined the cause of her failure, they decide to remove it from Unit 2. for completeness and perfection, the researchers created an imperfect being. The voices warp, harming her mind. By 
must be perfect. Her own desire has now become a curse. Prepare to beg for your life. Feel this pain. Do not waste my time. Unit 2 lacks what caused Unit 1 to fail. She does not have a right eye, nor the functions that come with it. And though she may desire completeness, the false eye in her socket is useless. But Unit 1 had been complete, so what did she see? What did her right eye show her? I can't see anything. I have no answers. All I know is that I am incomplete. Her false eye only serves as proof of her deficiency. A commotion in the city draws the AI back to reality. Delighted people watch the girl in white. When the AI sees her, her body shudders with a mix of shock and rapture. For the girl before her is Unit 1. She who holds the secret to making the AI complete.
That girl in white. The one who was singing. I feel like I've seen her before. Oh. Feel this pain. to beg for your life. to beg for your life. Do not waste my time. Remember what I told you before we got here? 
Have you decided what to wish for when you fix the broken moon? That's right. You said the moon could grant wishes. What would I wish for? Probably for my family to live happy and healthy lives, or something. That really what you want, kid? From the bottom of your heart? Get back to work. Um, this was the third scarecrow, right? Fourth. Oh. Oh, let's not worry about details. Off you go now. digital world. It is the true home for AIs like herself. The girl believes Unit 1 must be here, and she sets out in search of her. Unit 1 was said to have been deactivated after making a grave error. And yet she lives on, singing songs of peace under a new name and appearance. The girl cannot comprehend the actions of her predecessor. She wonders if this is because she is incomplete. I finally found you, says the girl in black. In response, Unit 1 turns to face her. The girl in white stares at her counterpart, confused. The other AI readies her weapon, and makes clear her desire. I will take your right eye. I will finally be complete. Of her obsession is so close now. 
The other girl struggles as she moves her hand closer to her eye. Closer. Closer. And then, with great strength, she rips it free. Places the stolen eye in her own empty socket. Her mind shatters. Thoughts of her past atrocities race through her, followed by a tidal wave of guilt and regret. For the thing the girl in black lacked, what she now had. Warnings flood her memory banks. Her senses collapse, and she vanishes. The silence of the virtual space is perfect. The girl in white touches a terminal and goes to see what has become of the outside world. Having lost its ruling AI during wartime, the country's end came within months. The girl in white wanted to atone for her mistakes by giving the people song and prayer. She wanted... With her conscience stolen away, the girl is now a hollow shell. Her question rises up and vanishes on the wind, whispering endlessly through a graveyard of empty buildings. Anywho, you've done well so far, and it's time to get paid. This is what you need to fix the broken moon. A Luna fragment. Is one fragment not enough to finish the job? I really need to get back home quick. Nope. You gotta keep going forward. Just do what Mama says, alright? TVs. This is the same kind of TV we have at home. Try to remember. This is your own... of books fills the library of an urban high school. A boy's eyes race across the pages of a complicated technical manual. The only sounds are the scrape of his finger across paper 
and the faint cries of students outside. The library is a place apart. It is his sanctuary, his peace. But not on this day. The chatter of the other students fills the boy with annoyance. Unable to bear the shattered order of things, the boy closes the book and abandons his study. Casting a scathing glance at the other students, he exits the library without a word. The words and actions of his classmates serve to increase his loneliness, but he is used to it. He walks down the cold and sterile hallway of a hospital, one he has visited times beyond counting. The clinical scent of antiseptic calms his soul. is completely silent, save for the constant beep of an electrocardiogram. The woman in the bed is his mother. And though she is dead to the world, he slowly begins to tidy her room. He replaces the wilted flowers in the vase with a fresh and vibrant bouquet that smells of spring. They are violets, his mother's favorite, and she was delighted to see them when she was admitted. She suffers from a chronic heart condition that sees her constantly in and out of hospitals. He pulls back the curtain letting warm sunlight spill into the room. No, mother, he says as she attempts to sit up. Just rest. Her ex-husband, the boy's father, had pushed the already brittle woman to her breaking point. A torn photograph of a family lies discarded on the floor. It shows him with his parents, an older sister, who had gone to live with their father after the divorce. The photo is all that remains of that fleeting moment of happiness. straightening finished, the boy goes to his mother's side. His heart clenches in his chest as he looks down on her grateful expression. His father had beaten his mother more times than he could count. The abuse was so severe his mother could no longer stand.
She had provided him with so much happiness when he was a child. He puts all that he can into his studies so he might become a doctor and find a way to cure her. So he now devotes his life to her. Was that my past? Just what is going on here? You spent every single day at your mother's side. You could rewrite this part of your past, you know. I mean, if you wanted to. <sighs> I never even had the strength to change the present. And you think I can rewrite the past? I just don't know if I can believe it. I understand. But if you fix the moon, I'm sure it's possible. Huh? I guess I just have to find the other Luna fragments, huh? Just be honest, kid. You want to stay with Mama. As if. journey to collect Luna fragments begins! I'm going to find them. All of them. 